I don't know if this video is going to be very controversial, but I absolutely hated A Quiet Place Part 2. I loved A Quiet Place Part 1, but I hated A Quiet Place Part 2. Hey everyone and welcome back to Films with Frida. Thank you so much for being here and watching. If you are subscribed, thank you so much. It means so much to me. And if you're happy to subscribe to this content, I put out new videos every week. Now onto the movie. There are just so many things in this movie that just didn't work for me. It was written and directed by John Krasinski and I love John Krasinski. I love Emily Blunt, but that doesn't mean that this was a good script. In my opinion, the introduction of Killian Murphy's character felt like a rushed and passionate panicked move to fill a very big dad size hole that they made at the end of the first movie, kind of negating somewhat from the sacrifice that he made in the first movie. You can't just have the family bump into a replacement dad because you now don't know how to move the script forward because we've now got a single mum with three kids, one of which is a baby that they need to stop from crying and quite frankly they're probably going to kill by giving them so much gas so that they don't cry and have the aliens get them. And they act like this hearing aid is this master weapon that can save them all. I don't wear hearing aids, so I'm no expert. I don't claim to be an expert, but I do know a few people that have worn hearing aids for years and all of them have mentioned to me at some point in time that it's really annoying that the batteries run out so quickly, they need to be changed frequently, they often break and need to be serviced and repaired by medical professionals. So this hearing aid that's going to save their lives isn't going to last all that long. And whilst we're on this topic, according to IMDB Goofs tab on this movie, the turntable playing Beyond the Sea is equipment accurate for a radio station. However, as part of a major plot point of months long broadcast of repeated song or signal, this model of turntable could not have been used as it is a manual turntable and has no automatic repeat function. So they couldn't even be bothered to get that right. And I just think the protagonists are awful people. They put other people in really vulnerable positions and just expect them to help them. They go to this island and they literally bring the alien with them on the boat. Only the minor characters die, there's never any risk for any of the lead characters. At least in the first movie they killed off the kid really early on and that really kept us on our toes. There was nothing in this movie that really kept me on my toes. In my opinion I think they should have killed off Emily Blunt and then they could have done a third movie where they could explore the themes of these kids having to become adults all too soon in this dystopian future, but they were never going to do that because no one who was a major character was ever at risk of dying. And did we need this movie? Because if you think about it, this movie ends exactly the same as the first movie. How did this movie really expand on the franchise or expand on this world that was built in movie one at all? The sonic noise keeps creatures at bay. We know that. Okay, they can now live on this island until an alien comes and destroys that island, just like they could live in their farm until an alien came and destroyed their farm. It's no different. I know this is a really harsh critique, but I just can't see what value this film added to the world that was created in the first one. But I get that I am probably totally alone in my critique of this movie because the reviews are amazing. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a tomato meter score of 91% and an audience score of 92%. And even on IMDb, it's got 7.2 out of 10. So maybe everyone thinks this is a good movie and I'm just really alone. Or does everybody really like John Krasinski and Emily Blunt? And maybe, maybe that's playing some kind of role in how we view this movie. I'm not saying that's the case, but I'm not saying it's not the case. According to a very quick Google search, A Quiet Place 2 was made on a budget of around 55 to 61 million, which is more than three times what the original was made on of only $17 million. And in my opinion, I do think you can fall into a trap where more money can equal less creativity and I think the best franchise to demonstrate that is with The Matrix. So the first Matrix movie was made on a budget of 63 million dollars which is a lot of money but when you think about the amount of special effects and CGI they had to do for that movie at that time in history it's not that much so they were forced to be very creative in a number of ways. By the time the second movie came around they were given a budget of 150 million dollars so pretty much no more financial constraints and in my opinion it resulted in a lot less creativity and a much worse movie. But back to A Quiet Place 2. 
According to the internet, in a very quick Google search, it made basically $300 million off of that budget, so I think they did quite well. <laughs> But that's all for me today, guys. Let me know your thoughts on this one down below. Do you completely disagree with me? Am I alone in thinking this movie just isn't that great? Is this going to be like my video on Megan, which is one of the most disliked videos on my channel? Let me know down below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!